7. Anna Elk Moon's been murdered, and it's all over the news. Get down to headquarters pronto. Headquarters are desperate. Friends and fans of Anna Elk Moon, one of the Southwest's most celebrated potters, are gathering here outside of her home in Santa Vera to pay their respects. Widely acknowledged as the foremost practitioner of the popular Santa Vera pottery style, Elk Moon was found dead early this morning in her studio by her husband, Jack Gordon, a professor at the university. Police are releasing few details, but it is believed the subject suffered fatal gunshot wounds. No suspects have been identified as of yet. This is Teresa Chavez for KITT Channel 6 News. Heading back to headquarters, over. Copy that, D-52. I thought you'd never get here. Come on in. One thing's for sure. Anna Elk Moon had some friends in pretty high places. I've already heard from the governor's office, the honchos in the legislature, and the regional director of the FBI. Everybody wants answers. I told them I got my best people working on the case. So don't make a liar out of me, huh? Now, there's not a lot I can tell you here. The victim was found in her studio by her husband at approximately 5 a.m. Bullet in her brain. And they both went to the public hearing on the casino project last night. When they got home, she went straight to her studio to work. Ah, uh, Detective Nice Guy, come on in. I'm just filling your partner in here. Anyway, it looks like some of her pots are missing. That and a bunch of cash. At least two grand, according to Gordon. He says his wife hated banks, and she always carried a wad with her. Now, let's get this straight. I'm giving you overall authority for this case. But since the victim is a Native American living off tribal lands, uh, we've got to tread lightly here. So I'd like Night Sky to do most of the talking. Comprende? All right. Now, I'm also assigning a Sergeant Rebecca Orlando to do the legwork, checking alibis for you. Uh, Night Sky, tell them about that new gadget we got there, that uh, PDA, Personal Digital... What? PDA, Chief. Personal Digital Assistant. These will keep us in touch with headquarters day or night. The lab can beep us for test results, or if the chief needs to talk to us... All right, all right, all right, all right. We got a murder case to solve here. Now, just push the help button there if you can't figure this thing out. Now, remember, I got half the state breathing down my neck. I want answers, and I want the right ones. The FBI's already making noises about jurisdiction. I can only guarantee you people five days to crack this before the big boys muscle in. So... Use your time wisely. You don't follow the right leads. Your five days will get eaten up with chit-chat and blind alleys. And I don't want you people hanging out with those nutcases at the Mongoose Tavern. Everybody down there thinks they're Sam Spade. Don't be standing around here. Come on, let's get going. <laughs> Detective Rebecca Orlando here, reporting for duty. Hey, detectives, forensics will be closing off the crime scene in seven hours, so you better get over there pronto. Hmm, only five days to solve the mystery. Good luck. Time flies in Santa Fe. D-52, we're on our way to Jack Gordon's, over. 10-4. Can you describe the events of last night? You drove home after the meeting? We must have gone. You didn't hear anything? Gunshots? You say you watched TV when you got home. A letter, when I got in. Is there anyone else you think might shed some light on all of this? I had been working with an anti-casino group. Uh... Condolences, Mr. Gordon. 
We'll be in touch. That guy really knows how to booze it up. Looks like he likes his scotch whiskey. What do you think, partner? Think he did it? There's an important lead from Carrie March. The chief requests that you proceed to her residence immediately. Que estupido. Jack Gordon has no alibi. He says he fell asleep during the 11 o'clock news. More like passed out. All grass from what I hear. With this alibi, he's placing himself at the crime scene around the time of the murder. With an alibi like that, who needs a confession? The only fingerprints in the artist's journal that we could find are Anna Elkmoon's own. A copy of the journal can be found in the evidence files in your PDA, if you want to take a closer look. The drawings in there might hold some significance. D-52, proceeding to Kerry March residence. Over. 10-40-52. Officers! Oh, I'm so glad you responded to my call. I have some information I think you'll find of interest. Thanks, Mrs. March. But let's begin the interview officially. Your name and occupation? Carrie March. I'm... widowed. And what is it you think might help our investigation? Yes, well, you see, everyone knows that Anna left Roy Elkmoon to marry Jack Gordon. That's yesterday's papers. But what isn't so well known is that, that Jack left his wife, too. Karen Gordon. And Karen had been a friend of Anna's. That's how she met Jack. Karen was furious. Furious enough to seek revenge? Well, that's something I'd rather not speculate about. Although I must say, Karen's indignation rang a little hollow. I mean, she was having an affair of her own with Ed Snyder. The man behind the casino. The very same. Karen and Jack had always been something of an odd couple. I mean, Karen's so outgoing and Jack is, well, he's so bookish. Frankly, if I were Jack, I would have left Karen 
ages ago because of the chain smoking alone. And it's those horrible clove cigarettes. Detestable things, aren't they? Anyway, you were saying about Anna? Well, I wonder if her real interest wasn't in that young anti-casino activist. Paul Bellin, I believe. Is there anything else? Well, Anna was giving Sonny two feathers fits, but then she wasn't the only one taking a stand against the casino. Sonny's working with Ed Snyder, isn't that right? Well, they both want the casino plans approved, but I'm not sure you could say they're working together. I mean, Sonny represents the Indian faction that supports the project, and Ed is, well, in it purely for the money. But the casino advocates aren't the only ones Anna rubbed the wrong way. There was Frank Delgado, for instance. The Delgado Gallery? He had been, been Anna's dealer for the longest time. Now, a lot of people give Frank the credit for Anna's skyrocketing success. Quite the savvy marketer. And then, out of the blue, Anna left him three months ago. Left the gallery for another middleman? Given the growing demand for her work, she felt she could sell directly to collectors, but it's only half the story. Anna and Frank had a knockdown drag out at the Mesa Cafe just ten days ago. You overheard the argument? No, <laughs> it was impossible not to. Frank said Anna still owed him two pots, and he said if she stiffed him, he'd destroy her. Anna just laughed at him. <laughs> Poor Frank, you should have seen his face. Last time I saw that shade of crimson was on one of Anna's pots. His warning that he'd destroy her, was he any more explicit? Well, he stopped short of a death threat, if that's what you mean, but I'd certainly talk to him if I were you. Oh, and by the way, where were you between 10 and 2 a.m. on the night in question? <laughs> you think I could have been involved? How positively wicked! I was home in bed. You'll have to check with Mildred, my cook. She always brings me salsa and homemade chips around 11. Instant heartburn. The wages of gluttony. If you think of anything else, please don't hesitate to give us a call. Bet she'd love to come in for a lineup, just for the thrill of it. Probably ask for the handcuffs, too. D-52, we're on our way to Paul Balin's office. Over. Okay, D-52, copy. Have a seat. I was hoping you'd come. This is about Anna, right? Yes, Mr. Balin, it is. Did you find the dirtbag who did this? Well, we're still in the information gathering mode. You know Ed Snyder and Sonny Two Feathers? They'd steamroll their own grandmothers if they thought this casino plan could get passed. Are you accusing either one of them of her murder? Well, I have no proof, but I believe they were tied up in it, yes. Mr. Balin, exactly what was your connection to Anna Elkmoon? Well, we, we shared a common goal. She didn't want to see her people's culture trashed, and I didn't want to see a pristine corner of New Mexico ruined forever. There's no water. There's no infrastructure. It's a recipe for environmental disaster. So that's it? You were political bedfellows? I guess you could say that. I assume you were also at the public hearing. What happened afterward? Well, um, we'd arranged to go over some strategy for the upcoming vote. We agreed that uh, I'd come over to the studio late. But, uh, 
when I arrived, I realized that uh, there was someone else there. So someone visited her after the meeting? Yeah. There was a green Econoline van parked outside. So uh, I realized that our meeting could wait for a better time. What time was that? 12.10, 12.15, sometime around then. Hmm. Do you remember any numbers or letters on the license plate? No. It's just in-state plates, that's all. And um, after you drove away? I went home. I have a roommate. She saw me come in. Okay. Thanks for your help. We'll be in touch. Dispatch, Detective 52, Night Sky here. Can you run a 2829 registration check on all in state green Econoline vans in the Santa Fe area? Copy. Okay, D52, copy. Phone records show that Anna Elkmoon placed three phone calls from her studio on the afternoon before the murder. One to Astrid Ames at 2.35, one minute. One to Vaughn... D-52 proceeding to Sunny Two Feathers on the Pueblo, over. 10-4, D-52. Night Sky, Mr. NYPD Red, how are you? What can I do for you? We're here about Anna Elkmoon's murder. Yeah, that's a real shame. I heard about that this morning. She was a real hero to a lot of the young ones. I don't know what I could tell you, though, that you don't already know. She was a pretty fierce opponent of your plans for the casino of the Ancient Ones. Misguided, like a lot of folks. But I didn't take it personally. You don't last too long in Pueblo politics if you take it personally. So you weren't party to any effort to get back at her? Come on, Night Sky, you know better than that. Indians don't kill Indians. White men kill Indians. I understand she spoke out at the casino meeting and got a pretty positive reaction. <laughs> Who'd you talk to? Her sidekick? That Belen boy, I tell you, I heard as many hisses as I did cheers. The irony is, Anna probably helped us more than she hurt us. She's not exactly Miss Popularity out here, not since she took a hard line on expanding the Indian market. You're saying to me you're glad she came out against the casino? Well, a lot of folks think Anna wanted to have her cake and to eat it too. The folks around here know that the casino means a steady income, a chance to educate the kids. Anna's already made her bundle. It's easy to talk about slowing progress when you tool around town in a Mercedes. What about the Santa Vera market? Half the Indian population in Santa Vera makes its livelihood from the Indian market, directly or indirectly. If you get excluded from that, you might as well move out of town. But you know me, Night Sky. I'm not about to point my finger at any brother. Like Raymond Wolfwalker, for instance? You said it. I didn't. What's your connection to Ed Snyder? Ed's the man that's going to bring prosperity to the Pueblo. I understand there have been some tensions between the two of you lately? Well, Ed's a businessman, looking out for his own interests. There's nothing wrong with that. But I've got responsibilities to my own people. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Where were you on the night of the murder between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m.? Well, we were in meetings after the public hearing until about uh, 11. And then me and a couple of the boys went over to the Bristlecone Bar to have some drinks and uh, stayed till about midnight. That's it. I got home about 1 a.m. Thanks for your time, Two Feathers. Much obliged. Say, uh, we could still use your support for the casino. 
if you'd like to volunteer sometime. I've never trusted that guy. He'd sell out in a second if he had the chance. I just got another call from the governor's office. He says his constituents are bombarding him. Now, I told him you two were getting very close. And you sure as hell better be. Three Green Fort O'Connor lines are registered in the area. Two here and one in Albuquerque. But that one's a conversion bank with customized windows. Of the two here, one is registered to Tom McCors, the other is registered to a corporation, FG Limited. FG Limited is owned by Frank Delgado. C. Kerry Marches Cook Mildred confirms her alibi. Kerry was in bed eating salsa and watching television from 11 until she fell asleep at midnight. And Mildred a dice reading trashy magazines. What a cookie lady! The phone was wiped clean of prints, which seems highly unusual. The intruder must have made a call and then wiped it down. I would definitely order a phone trace to check all the calls that were made from the studio on the day of the murder. On our way to see Ed Snyder, over. Okay, 10 Good day, detectives. What can I do for y'all? Coffee for either one of you? No thanks, but we would like to ask you some questions about Anna Elkmoon. Why? Am I a suspect in her murder for standing on a different side of the controversy? We had way too many opponents to kill all of them. We have to investigate every avenue. We only have a few questions. Well, I can tell you this. Anna Elkmoon, when it came to reality, had no idea what she was talking about. There's nothing more dangerous than an influential ignoramus. Did you know Elkmoon? Well, I can't say that we ever spoke to one another, but of course I knew her on sight. What about your relationship to Karen Gordon? You find that significant, detectives? Well, we were seeing each other, if that's what you're getting at. Where did you go after the public hearing on the night of Elk Moon's death? Well, a couple of the guys from the development team. We went to the Okatia for drinks. It was uh, around 11. We left about midnight. Fred, the bartender, can confirm that. I was home in bed by 12.30. Were you alone? No. Well, Karen joined us at the bar and we left together. She spent the night. Thank you, Mr. Snyder. We'll be back if we have any other questions. Any time, officers. Good old boy likes two things, himself and his cash. And if Anna stood in his way on the casino project, she was messing with both. Proceeding to Joe Data's residence, over. Copy that, D-52. I hardly have to ask the Pueblo's medicine man his occupation. I haven't seen much of you since you left the tribal police for the Santa Fe PD. How are you, Night Sky? Working. 
You know we're investigating the death of Anna Elkmoon. You have your job, I have mine. Joe, we understand that the victim called you on the afternoon of her death from the phone in her studio. Yes. I was having lunch with my nephew, Sonny Two Feathers, at the time. She wanted to visit me. I knew Anna when her allegiances were undivided. She strayed too far into the realm of the white man. And it seems she has paid the ultimate price. What did she want to talk to you about? This will be in absolute confidence, please. You may know something that can help us find her killer. She was calling about the pot. The one that she was cleaning for return to the Pueblo? When I was a boy, the pot was considered a most sacred object in the Kiva. One day, it disappeared, stolen by a pot hunter for riches. Hmm. I remember my mother talking about a great Kiva. It contains the greatest artifacts of our tribe. It was created when the Spanish first came, bringing their religion. They drove the corn mothers away, and they put things in this kiva for protection. The location was a great secret. Only the most important elders knew. One day, there was a raid, and the Spaniards killed nearly all the old ones. So no one knew where to find the kiva? There were whispers, dreams, rumors. Are you saying Anna died because of some kind of spiritual violation or because someone wanted to get their hands on that pot? That I cannot say. Go with the spirits. I fear the pot has not claimed its last victim. I don't know. Anna and Joe, he's always been disappointed in her. Says she's not good for our people. But kill her? I don't see it. The receipt is for Anna Elk Moon's restoration services for cleaning the historic Kiva pot, which Astrid Ames was going to return to the Pueblo. I found both Elk Moon and Ames' fingerprints on the receipt, along with some clay traces from her studio. Too bad that pot is missing. A priceless artifact like that sure put some pressure on the chief to find out who did this. No, Mr. Two Feathers has no alibi. He left the bristle cone bar at midnight and didn't make it home until 1. The drive should have taken him half an hour. Where's the missing half hour? D-52, we're on our way to see Tom McHorse, over. Okay, 10-4, D-52. McHorse, we need to talk to you about Anna Elkmoon. Yeah? She can rot in hell. I ain't seen her since she fired me. Gotta be three. Four months ago. Then you didn't visit her in her studio late on the night of her death? No, I didn't know she bought the big one. Where have you been? Under a rock? You might could have said that. Where were you on the night of the 11th? 11th? I don't know. Drinking, I guess. Probably the cigar. I don't quite remember. I've been kind of out of it lately. 
You had a run-in with Anna Elkmoon that got you fired, is that right? She said I was doing drugs. That's a big lie. She doesn't pay me enough to buy drugs. So maybe you wanted to get back at her. You're saying I killed her. That's a bunch of BS. She ain't worth the trouble. Got better things than to worry about that woman. You carry a gun, Mr. McCourse? I had a run-in with the law a few years back. They took away all my guns. Don't need them anyways. I'm not such a good shot. But I do take out a coyote now and then. Look, I gotta go. Phone's ringing. Maybe we could do this some other time. Oh, he did it. Problem is, he wouldn't know if he shot someone or if they shot him. D-52 heading to Astrid Ames residence, over. Copy. I'm sorry, but Mrs. Ames can't see you now. She's quite distraught over Miss Elkmoon's death. She's resting on doctor's orders. Then may we speak with you briefly? Uh, certainly. Please, sit down. You're Mrs. Ames' housekeeper? Assistant. I have been faithfully at her side for almost 17 years. Did you know the victim? I didn't know her. We, uh, Mrs. Ames owned several of her pots, and Miss Elkmoon was cleaning a pot for us in preparation for returning it to the Santa Vera Pueblo. There's some indication the pot may have been a motive for the murder. That pot has brought nothing but grief to Mrs. Ames. Grief? In what way? No, oh, well, it's not for me to say, but... Well, Mrs. Ames has had a difficult time with her only living relative, a nephew, Ronald Ames. When the story came out in the newspaper about Mrs. Ames returning the pot to the Indians, he came over and exploded at his aunt, said she had no right to give it away, and that he forbid it. Did he have any say in the matter? Well, the pot was left to Astrid. Oh, forgive me, Mrs. Ames, by her sister, Bernice, Ronald Ames' mother. She died several years ago, and the poor woman foolishly promised her son that Astrid would leave the pot to him in her will. And did she? I mean, before she offered to return it to the Pueblo. I don't know. But I do know that Ronald Ames is a greedy, selfish young man. He accused her of squandering his inheritance, a and that's when she asked him to leave. Any idea how much the pot is worth? Oh, its only value to Mrs. Ames was aesthetic, but I understand it's priceless. Did Ron Ames know the pot was being cleaned by Anna Elkmoon? Anna cleaned and restored several pots for Mrs. Ames in the past. He could have guessed as much. Was the pot insured? No. I gather it's quite a financial loss on top of everything else. <laughs> Naturally, that's why we're hoping you can recover it. Did Miss Moon call Mrs. Ames any time on the day she was murdered? Yesterday? Not that I'm aware of. Where were you at the time of the murder? Oh, Miss Carrie March, a friend of Mrs. Ames, came by for drinks at uh, 6.30. Afterward, Mrs. Ames and I uh, ate dinner by the fire. Then I read to her until 10.30 and she fell asleep. 
We'll call on Mrs. Ames later on. Thanks for your help. You're more than welcome. Now that's a pleasant woman, mean enough to shoot her own mother. Detectives, we have a tip that a green Econoline van has just been spotted outside the liquor store on Arroyo Blanco and 14th. You two get over there pronto. We don't want that driver to get away. Snyder's alibi checks out. A neighbor confirms that his car was parked outside the house all night, right next to the car of a young muchacha that visited him. Hmm, I wonder who that car belonged to. The liquid traces in the broken glass are scotch, and we matched it to old grouse. The fingerprints on the glass were a positive match with the victim's husband, Jack Gordon. D-52 to the liquor store, over. Copy. Tom, of course. Yeah, what do you want? Can we take a look in your van? Go ahead, you got nothing to hide. What's this? What the hell, man? Where'd that come from? Hands on the door. Tom, of course. I'm placing you under arrest for the murder and the robbery of Anna Elkmoon. You have the right to remain silent. You're crazy, man. Anything I'm you say you, man. can and will be it's used against you no in a way, court of man. law. I swear, I don't know how that stuff got into my van. Not a clue. Where were you on the night of the 11th? I told you, I was at the Segura bar all night. I arrived there around D. I was there, I swear. Ask them, they'll tell you. Then what did you do? I drove to Santa Fe. Why? Were you trying to flee Santa Vera? No, I, I was gonna hit some bingo parlors like I did most weekends. Problem was, I wasn't driving too well. I checked into a motel, the Quick 7. I really didn't start feeling very good till this morning. How did the uh, stolen artifacts get into your van? I don't know. Somebody must have put them there. And the gun? Never seen it before. Man, don't I have a right to have a lawyer? Yeah, sure. Ballistics show rifling marks consistent with a gun that killed Elk Moon. This was definitely the murder weapon. A computer trace shows the gun was stolen from a man in Albuquerque over three years ago. I guess you guys would call this a safe gun. No way to make a positive link to anyone since the original burglary is still on the books as unsolved. There's definitely something hinky about all this. D-52, the chief requests that you proceed to his office, ASAP. Listen, I'm getting heat from the Federation for Indian rights. Now that Astrid Ames's pot has been recovered, they want it delivered to the Shaman Joe Adetta at your earliest convenience. 
which I'm telling you is right now. Proceeding to Joe Data's residence, over. Copy that, D-52. Back so soon? We found the missing pot in the possession of someone who may have killed Anna. Chief Weber wanted us to give it to you, as Miss Ames intended. But the DA says it could be subpoenaed in a preliminary hearing. Thank you. This is not the pot. It's a counterfeit. A fake. And not a very good one at that. There's a dozen potters in town that could have turned this out in an afternoon. A fake? Are you sure? The sacred pot. The real one has a great, great spirit. This one, it's empty. Devoid of spirit. Tom McCorse's alibi checks out and he has now been released from custody. We may now re-interview all suspects. To issue an arrest warrant, we must proceed back to headquarters. But remember, we've only got one shot at making an arrest. Yoi Tera, the medicine man, checks out okay. After the casino hearing, he spent the night with his granddaughter on the Pueblo. He can't even drive. He makes about as likely a suspect as Gandhi. On our way to see Karen Gordon, over. 10.40.52. Your name, please, and your occupation? My name is Karen Gordon. I'm Jack Gordon's ex-wife. And if I'd had any sense, I'd have ditched the name when he ditched me. What else? Oh, yes, I sell real estate. Do you mind if I smoke? No. You were a former friend of the victim? <sighs> yes. Until she decided that friendship meant stealing my husband. You see, Jack was looking for an Indian artist to talk to some of his students, and I suggested Anna. <laughs> I guess I only have myself to blame, right? Do you still love Jack Gordon? Oh, please, Mr. Night Sky, I do have my character flaws, but <laughs> masochism does not happen to be one of them. Besides, there is another man in my life now, okay? Can you please account for your whereabouts between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. the night of the murder? 10 p.m. to 2 p.m. Yeah, I was at home till about 10.40. And then I left to meet Ed Snyder and the gang at the Octillo. Me and Ed left together around midnight. Ed Snyder's the new man in your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've been seeing each other for a while. Is that a crime? The ex. She did it. Call it my masculine intuition. The professor dumps her for Anna. She's plotting revenge ever since. Cigarette butts from a clove cigarette. There are sebaceous residues, but they're too corrupted for us to get a clean print. Sorry about that.
D-52 proceeding to sunny two feathers on the Pueblo, over. 10-4, D-52. Look, I'm a married man, and I didn't want it getting out. I made a stop that night, but, uh, I've got a girlfriend, Juanita Morales. I promised her I'd come over. She's been on my case lately, and I went over there, and we talked and had a drink, and... Look, I don't want this getting back to my wife, but you can ask Juanita. I was there from 12.30 until almost 1.00. Whoever killed Anna, I can guarantee it had nothing to do with the casino. And the people of the Pueblo, they're proud and they're strong. There is no way they would let anyone scare them into voting one way or another. Heading back to headquarters, over. Copy that, D-52. D-52 proceeding to sunny two feathers on the Pueblo, over. 4 D-52. We're looking for Sunny Two Feathers. Not here. Do you know where we can find him? I'm not too sure. I think he got a call from Metznar just before he left. Maybe he went over there. Thanks. All right. On our way to see Ed Snyder, over. Okay, 10 4 52 Detectives. I'm afraid Mr. Snyder is left for the day. Is there anything I can help you with? Where did he go? Well, he didn't tell me. <clears throat> Let me check his book. Hmm. There's a phone number right here in his handwriting. What is it? Five 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 four three eight five. That's Joe Adata's number. What do you say we go pay Joe a visit? Proceeding to Joe Adata's residence, over. Copy that, D-52. Officers, I'm so glad you came. My grandfather's missing. He went with his coffee to go sit by the river this morning and never returned. All we found was this, his cup. No other sign? No. Kathy Sosie, granddad's neighbor, she said she thought she saw granddad get into a fancy white car with a man, a man in a cowboy hand. She said they headed out that way. But that just goes deep onto Pueblo land. After a few miles, it's not passable. What's out there? Some old Indian ruins, a sweat lodge, and Diablo Canyon. Diablo Canyon? It's easy to get lost up there, isn't it? Yes, you have to go on foot. We'll go take a look. Call headquarters if he shows up. D-52, we're heading to the canyon. Over. Over, D-52. Move it! Now! Or next time I shoot to kill. Let me see the pot again! You're stalling! Get going! Move it! 
Snyder! Hold it right there. Well, 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 nice guy. You're smarter than I thought. I'll give you credit for that. Now let's just hope that you're smart enough to turn around and go back to where you came from. Or your friend here is gonna have to pay the price. Snyder, drop the gun. You don't want to hurt an old man like Adata. What is he to you? He is my ticket to the lost Kiva, that's what. A drawing on the pot? That's right. Anna realized that the illustration showed a landmark somewhere in this area. And this is the only man who knows which one. No one knows for sure! The Kiva's just an old legend. You're chasing a phantom, Snyder. I guarantee it. Now let the old man go. No can do. Those Hellraisers find out the Kiva sits under or near my casino site. My plans will come to a grinding halt. I'll be ruined. Do what the man says, Ed. Well, well, well. There's Anna Elk Moon's killer night sky. Looks like I brought him right to you. And I don't even want a reward. He, he put me up to it. I'll swear to that. I had to get rid of Anna. Ed said he would tell the elders about my stake in the casino. I tried to keep the pot away from him, Uncle Joe, but he wanted to get rid of anything that could hurt the deal. But I'm not going to let you hurt my uncle. You got what you came for. Now take him and go. Here's your reward, you son of a... Sonny Two Feathers and Ed Snyder are currently serving life sentences for the murder of Anna Elkmoon. Ed Snyder was also sentenced to 20 years for the kidnapping and assault on Joe Adetta. Based on Sonny's confession, this is what happened. Sonny was with his uncle Joe Adetta the afternoon Anna called Joe. She thought the sacred pot's design with its double peaks could point to the ancient Kiva site at the base of the twin mountains of the Santa Cristos, right where the casino development was planned. That's all the ammunition Anna would need to kill the casino deal. Ed blackmailed Sonny into killing Elkmoon, threatening to reveal Sonny's very substantial stake in the casino development and exposing him as a disgrace to his people. The night of the murder, Sonny found Tom McHorse at the Saguaro bar and drugged him, taking his van to the Elkmoon residence. After midnight, Sonny cornered Anna in her studio and shot her. One bullet straight to the head, he then planted evidence to frame McCorse, including the cigarette butt and the gardener's dirt print laced with phosphates. Sonny had a fake pot made overnight by a potter in the Santa Vera market and stowed the pot in Tom McCorse's van. What neither of the men had counted on was that Sonny's Uncle Joe Adata would detect the fake. Ed Snyder's greed proved to be his undoing. He wanted to plunder the Kiva before burying its secrets forever but that meant enlisting Joe Adata to help him find the site. When Sonny found out about it, he knew Ed would never let the old man live, and he had enough blood on his hands already. Sonny's remorse for his crimes were real, but Ed Snyder's only regret was getting caught. Ironically, the casino project was voted down in what a lot of people saw as a sympathy vote for Anna Elkmoon. The ancient pot has been returned to Joe Adata, shaman of the Santa Vera Pueblo. Whether it ever pointed the way to the famous lost Kiva remains a mystery. Nice work, you two. You do your job. My job's a piece of cake. Take a few days off, but not too many. You know Santa Fe. It'll only be a few more days before some nutcase out there decides to make our lives interesting again. 